Hello. In the previous episode we saw the principle of using the gamma correction. This time, we will see the electronics of the gamma chip found in the TCON board of the LCD TV. The gamma chip on this TCON board is recognizable by a series of clues. First, by the reference that is written on it. With this inscription one can find on the web the technical documentation or datasheet. Secondly, we note around the integrated circuit the presence of a multitude of resistors. The datasheet here informs us that the chip can handle up to 18 different voltages. As we can see at the top of this card, there is clearly the inscription of the word gamma, and right next to it there is a numbering going from 1 to 18 with orange colored dots corresponding to test points to measure the 18 voltages of the gamma. Note that all the tracks of the gamma go to the two connectors of the TCON to the LCD panel. When we look at the technical documentation of a gamma chip, we see that it is an assembly of several operational amplifiers grouped in the same integrated circuit. On the datasheet, the gamma chip is called channel voltage reference generator or channel voltage buffers. Like the chip seen earlier on the TCON board, this one has 18 circuits dedicated to gamma voltages, and another op amp reserved for the VCOM voltage. Hence the figures that we find in the datasheet of the component. For the understanding of this subject, it is necessary to see what is an operational amplifier or op amps. If we take as an example an integrated circuit with a single op amps like the LM741, we can see in the technical documentation that it is in fact a complex miniaturized circuit. It is composed mainly of transistors here more than 20, several resistors and in this example there is one capacitor. The OPAMPS is represented on the diagrams in this way according to the American standard. It has the shape of a triangle with a point oriented to the right. It has two inputs, one positive and the other negative, and only one output. The positive pole is the non-inverting input and the negative pole is the inverting input. There are other representations such as the European standard but in practice it is not used and it is rarely found in the technical designs of manufacturers. The operational amplifier is an active component, which means that it requires a power supply. This supply is made with a direct current. On one side, there will be a positive power supply noted VDD, sometimes it is noted plus VCC. On the other side, it has a negative or zero supply. It is called VEE or VSS. When the voltage is zero, this is the same as connecting it to the ground, VCC and VEE are used for bipolar op-amps. The C is for the collector of the transistor and the E is its emitter. The terminology VDD and VSS is generally reserved for CMOS op-amps. The D is for the drain and the S for the source. When the op-amps is connected to ground it is said to have a single supply. On the other hand, when the voltage takes a negative value, minus VCC, the op-amps is said to be on dual supply. When the positive voltage is different from the negative voltage, we say that the power supply is asymmetrical. The power supply is said to be symmetrical when the value of minus VCC is identical to plus VCC but with a reversed polarity. In ideal op-amps, i.e. with zero defect, there is no current at its input because it has an infinite impedance or internal resistance. At the output, there can be a current whose value will depend on the load. This current comes from the op-amp's own power supply. In reality, the op-amp used are not perfect, there is nevertheless a very low current flow at the input of a few micro or nano amperes. The operational amplifiers are classified in two groups according to their use in the circuits. There is a linear and a non-linear application of op-amps. In linear application op-amp works in amplifier mode, the output voltage VO can take multiple values. These values are between the maximum voltage plus VCC and minimum of minus VCC or zero if the component is connected to ground. In the nonlinear application op-amp works in switching mode. The output voltage VO can only take two values either plus VCC or minus VCC. If the non-inverting voltage V plus is greater than the inverting voltage V minus, VO equals V plus. Otherwise, if the non-inverting voltage V plus is less than the inverting voltage V minus, then VO equals V minus. Now, if the inverting input is connected to the output through a circuit, we say that there is a negative feedback. The op-amp works here in linear mode. In the case where the inputs of the op-amp have no connection with the output, it is said to be in open loop. On the other hand, when there is a direct connection or via components between the non-inverting input and the output, we say that there is a positive feedback. 
The op amp configured in open loop or with a positive feedback circuit operates in a nonlinear mode. In the gamma chip, each op amp is wired with a negative feedback as shown in this diagram. The non-inverting input is connected to a current generator. This type of circuit is called a voltage follower or voltage buffer. The interest of this assembly is multiple. It allows to provide an output current which can be important without taking any from the source. This circuit does not attenuate an input signal. On the contrary, we find it as it is at the output. The output voltage is identical to the input voltage. The output load has no effect on the value of the output voltage. If the input voltage VI is equal to the output voltage VO, then why bother with such a setup? We see on this T-con board that there is a series of resistors around the gamma chip. When you look at the schematic on a datasheet, you can see that the resistors are put in series and form a voltage divider. So, in reality the gamma voltages are produced in this example outside the gamma chip thanks to a voltage divider. The generated gamma voltages will then transit via the operational amplifiers of the gamma chip to another chip located downstream and attached to the screen. This chip is used to drive the display of the columns by controlling the source of the TFT transistor located in the screen. The chip is called driver source or driver column. The gamma chip has the function of separating the voltages produced by the voltage divider and the chip that controls the display of columns. To better understand the interest of this circuit, let's see what would happen to the output voltage if we used only a voltage divider made of resistor. At least two resistors must be connected in series to obtain a voltage divider. The formula of the output voltage is displayed on the screen. It will depend on the value of the resistors. When a voltage divider is used, it means that we are going to supply another circuit behind it, which is also called a load and which we will note here R3. This load will be connected in parallel with the resistor R2. If the value of the load R3 changes, this will lead to a change in the equivalent resistance, so the output voltage will be modified. In TFT displays, there is a capacitor for each sub-pixel. This large capacitive load could cause the voltage to fluctuate if the voltage divider was directly connected to this load. So to keep the stability of this voltage, whatever the value of the load resistance, we separate the two circuits with a voltage follower circuit that uses an operational amplifier configured as such. The other interest of this circuit is to provide an output current that can be important without taking it from the source. Now what are these different gamma voltages used for? In a previous video dedicated to the internal architecture of a TFT screen, we saw the electrical diagram representing a sub-pixel. On this diagram, we find the TFT transistor drawn as a MOSFET, there is a storage capacitor and the liquid crystal is represented as a capacitor. To recall a capacitor is made of a double conductive armature separated by an insulating material. This is what we find with the cell enclosing the liquid crystal. Around it, there is a double conductive frame made with a transparent ito material separated in the middle by a double layer of insulating material made of polyimide. As this liquid crystal capacitor does not hold the charge properly, a real capacitor was added in parallel to hold the charge until the voltage change on the liquid crystal capacitor. We know that each pixel of the screen is composed of three sub-pixels representing the three primary colors red, green and blue. On one of the conductive plates will be applied the gamma voltage and on the other plate will be applied the reference voltage called VCOM. The electric current will create an electromagnetic field which will modify the orientation of the liquid crystal trapped between the two plates. It is this modification of the orientation of the liquid crystal which will make vary the intensity of the light passing by each sub-pixel. The driver source chip that controls the columns, in addition to the gamma voltages, also receives the image data to be displayed in the form of digitally coded data. We saw in the previous video, that if we use a coding on 8 bits, we can obtain from 0 to 255 different shades for each color red, green and blue. The three colors combined together gives 256 high to the power of 3 which allows to obtain more than 16 million different shades of color. To describe these different shades of color, we use the terms of grayscale. The driver source chip will apply a different gamma voltage according to the numerical value of the image to be displayed. Thus, the gamma voltage is used to control the wood crystal and to make pass the quantity wanted of light to obtain the adequate color by applying a factor of correction gamma to him. Another peculiarity to know about the liquid crystal is that it should not be applied the same voltage with the same polarity over a long period of time because this may polarize it like a magnet and cause it to lose its optoelectric properties, that is to say, 
to lose its ability to change the orientation of the liquid crystal according to the electric field applied to it. The technique used to avoid this drawback is to reverse the polarity applied to the liquid crystal cell. Whether plus V or minus V is applied has no influence on the amount of light that will pass through the liquid crystal. To achieve this change of polarity, the voltage called VCOM, sometimes noted VCM on the diagrams, comes into play here. The voltage VCOM which comes from the T-CON board does not pass by the chip which drives the source but goes directly to one of the conductive plates which directly connects all the pixels of the screen to the same voltage. Hence the other name of this common electrode plate. To better understand the role of the VCOM voltage and gamma voltages we will use a graph. On the horizontal line is represented the scale of gray level coded on 8 bits with values going from 0 which is the black color to 255 which is the white color. On the vertical axis are noted the gamma voltages in the VCOM. The curves obtained have this aspect. We see that the VCOM voltage is in the middle of the gamma voltages and it has a value about half of the AVDD voltage. In general the VCOM is between 5 to 7 volts. The VCOM will serve as a reference value. The gamma voltages above the VCOM, that is to say here the gamma voltages from 1 to 5 are considered as voltages with positive polarity and the voltages below the VCOM from 6 to 10 are considered as voltages with negative polarity. For example, on this graph gamma number 4, which is above the VCOM and therefore has a positive polarity, corresponds to 192 on the grayscale. The gamma number 7 is under the VCOM thus with negative polarity also corresponds to the value 192 on the scale of the gray level. The change of the polarity of the pixels can be done in several ways. The image to be displayed is subdivided into a number of rows and columns. There is the method of inversion of the frame, the polarity of all the pixels is modified at the same time and that with each display of a new frame. If the display frequency is 60 frames per second, 30 images will be displayed with a positive polarity and 30 with a negative polarity but in an alternating manner. Another method, we have the inversion of line. A line has for example a positive polarity the following one has a negative polarity and so on. There is the method of inversion of column with the same principle, a column is positive the following is negative. The last method that gives the best result by removing the phenomenon of flickering of the image related to the change of polarity is to alternate the polarity between each pixel. That's it for the theoretical side. Now in practice when we read a datasheet of a gamma chip we see written the number of channels that the chip includes. Here we have three examples. For the first reference, there are 12 op amps reserved for 12 gamma voltages and 1 op amp reserved for the VCOM voltage. For the second reference, there are 18 for the gamma and 1 for the VCOM. The third reference is a little particular compared to the two previous ones. There are 14 gamma voltages but their production is said to be programmable and we will see this particularity later on. For the two first references the gamma voltages are not programmable but fixed. Here are the schematics extracted from the datasheet of a gamma chip type AS19 which is the sum of 18 gamma plus 1 VCOM. At first sight the schematic looks complicated but when you look at it closely it is not so complicated. There are 19 operational amplifiers represented by a triangle. Here to number each amp we have chosen to assign them a letter of the alphabet from A to N. Accompanied by the letter I for input, O for output. In the datasheet, we find an example of wiring with this chip, we will zoom on it. We see well upstream, that is to say at the level of the input of the chip, there is a voltage divider made of a multitude of resistor put in series. At the input of the divider we have the AVDD voltage which will be subdivided to obtain the different gamma voltages. At the output we also see resistors but this one has a value of 0 ohm which is equivalent to a fuse resistor. Note that on technical documentation, the term AVDD can have other names like VDDA, VDA, VSA, HVAA, or Vsource. In general AVDD has a value between 10 and 20 volts with a high amperage. As a reminder, the AVDD voltage is produced in the TCON board by the DDC converter thanks to a circuit called a boost converter. In practice, when measuring the gamma voltages on a TCON board, we must find different values between each voltage and this in a decreasing way. This logic comes from the voltage divider. The very first voltage is the highest, then the next voltage is lowered by another resistor and so on until the last resistor of the voltage divider. Of course, if we take the measurements in the other direction, the values will increase. 
In the case of non-programmable gamma chips, we must find the same voltage values at the input as at the output of the gamma chip, because as we have seen the gamma chip only follows the voltage. If one or more abnormal values are found at the output, the input voltages must be checked directly on the resistors of the voltage divider. This will determine whether the anomaly is linked to a defective resistor in the voltage divider or whether it is the gamma chip that is defective. The gamma test points are not always clearly written on the T-con board as in the previous example. There are other inscriptions which are generally an abbreviation of the word gamma. We can find for example as inscription GMA, GM, VGM. V is for voltage and GM is the contraction of the word gamma. On the technical documentation of some gamma chips, they are marked as programmable. They do not use a voltage divider. The datasheet of the following reference states that the chip can generate 14 values of gamma voltages whose values are obtained by programming and it provides four fixed reference voltages thus non-programmable. The internal design is more complex compared to conventional gamma's chips. The principle of the programmable gamma chip is to create the different gamma voltage values through a microprocessor. The advantage of this technique is to be able to modify the value of the voltages by simple programming. Whereas in a classical gamma chip this is not possible because the value of the different voltages is fixed by the resistors of the voltage divider. In this programmable chip, the voltages are obtained by converting digital data into analog values thanks to a digital-to-analog converter circuit, known by the acronym of DAC. In the following table extracted from the datasheet, there is a proposal for the setting and the correspondence between the different values. For example, the digital data of the first line is coded with 8 bits, all the digits are zero. This data will correspond on the gray scale to the value 0 which is the color black. The DAC will take care of outputting two different voltages, one for the positive polarity and the other for the negative polarity. In this chip, besides the DAC, there are other circuits such as the latch register, operational amplifiers configured as voltage follower and there is a computer bus used for communication called I2C. In addition to the 14 programmable voltages, the chip taken as an example manages four voltages which will be used as reference. They will not be programmable. Their value will be fixed and obtained thanks to a voltage divider. There are two reference values for the gamma voltages with positive polarity, located above VCOM and two others for the gamma voltages with negative polarity. For terminology and inscriptions used, REF is an abbreviation of reference, H is for high, L is low, and the U for up. Here we have a T-con board with a programmable gamma chip. The smaller number of resistors near this chip already gives an idea of the type of gamma chip used. We also find the inscriptions concerning the four reference voltages that we have just seen. Another element that confirms that the chip is of the programmable type is to find in the datasheet the labels SDA for the data line and SCL for the clock signal. In some cases, such as in PC monitors, the gamma correction does not use a specialized electronic device like the gamma chip. This gamma correction is done through a software. First the image data are stored in a buffer in order to assign new values to them. For this we use a correspondence table known under the abbreviation LUT which is the acronym for lookup table. On the first column are written the input values and on the second are written the new values to assign. We arrive at the end, I hope that the explanations were clear. Goodbye and see you in the next video.